Hi, everybody. It is April 3rd, 2019. Less and less is making sense. Have you noticed that? Meteorologists don't make any sense. Yesterday, I walked into a neighbor's apartment. They had the weather channel on, and it was local on the 8th, and it said sunny, sunny. And we had horizon to horizon, thick cloud coverage sunny. They forecasted a thunderstorm for this past Monday. We didn't get it. The last forecast of a thunderstorm, which was just this past week, we didn't get it. I'm trying to make sense of the weather and I can't. I, I literally cannot. I look at the sites and some of these sites I will be pulling up. I I don't see the precipitation that our mainstream media meteorologists are seeing, or I don't see where we're going to be getting these storms from because everything looks clear. A bomb, I come across this article, I couldn't believe it. Now, before I get into this article, let me just show you what I got. Last night, it was uh, 11... 37 p.m. So it was, we had weird like bands of precipitation off the coast of Florida. Yeah, you know, but we had this, okay? Now, this is uh, off the coast of Virginia. And I knew that this thing, I could see the outline of a circular pattern, and I knew they were using Nexrad Doppler, the Nexrad harp rings, the high frequency heating, along with the extremely low frequencies, which are these straight fanned out lines that you can see right here, breaking up the that blue scattered scattering wasn't sure what was going on in uh, northern california because you know it's you see precipitation now but is it happening all right well right after i come over here and all of this precipitation is inland and yet where was it? It's nowhere to be seen. So, yeah, I did want to see. Uh, they were working it. It was pretty obvious they were working it. Perhaps to create that potential bomb cyclone. Something is pushing this precipitation pretty intensely. Now, you can see the microwaves, the ripples, and you can see the straight-edged uh, precipitation form. But you can also see it looks like the beginnings of a bomb cyclone. Yes, the spinning. Um, Nothing looks like it used to look anymore. Nothing. Okay, so here on the, is it University of Madison? The next round reflectivity map. All right. Well, we don't see any of this on radar on the next round reflectivity map. Let's go to next round here and Wow, doesn't that look a little strange? It does. But can you see the perfect circle, circular pattern right here? Doppler radar, next red harp rings intersecting in this potential bomb cyclone. And 
They were working it. Are they failing? I don't know. But I'm going to show you. I, I went on this site. Um, just you can see the ultra low frequencies as well in this uh, when I zoom in to the sub regional sectors. Now, a lot of people will say, that is just the end of next week. No, it's not the end of Doppler radar. Because you wouldn't be seeing all of these intersecting. So, these are high frequencies. They also had the extremely low frequencies. And it does look like they were working it and intensifying it. God, man. So it just goes along the coast. And but what you see next is once again a whole lot of storms inland that does not come up on radar. You see an awful lot of the high frequency heating, the red. Well, you get the high frequency heating from these Doppler radar stations. And the signature, the circular pattern. All right. Um, Right here, you can see the extremely low frequency. So high frequency um, heating, or the extremely low frequency modulated with the high frequency heating, voila, you get a cyclone. Oh, a bomb cyclone. And I have uh, a whole lot of videos on a playlist weather modification. So. Those videos have links to papers that show high frequency heating modulated with extremely low frequencies. They can create earthquakes, they can create cyclones. There was another uh, kind of weather in that title and I can't remember, but you can see the extremely low frequencies right on the outside, right here, coming up all of these defined lines. So what, did they fail? Did they fail miserably to bring about this bomb cyclone? Because I could not see it anywhere. And I also, what time was this? This was noon time today. And don't you love these extremely low frequencies going right through where I live. Oh, man. Can't stand it. But um, don't see much precipitation at all. What happened? Oh, okay. So it's still off the coast. Maine, did you get an awful lot of rain? But it begins to just disappear. So, um, this was noontime today, and they were calling for a bomb cyclone. So what happened? Did you get it? Please let us know. Uh, this is very bizarre. This is now. And they were claiming that this was heading for Canada. Well, I don't think you got much in Canada. Concerned about the precipitation that I see over Nebraska and South Dakota and isn't the Sioux Reservation I think it's right around here they're flooded out and 
what's happening in Missouri. Look at these straight lines. I have never seen so many quote unquote anomalies on these sites as I have in just the last couple of weeks. I mean, it's like, what the hell is going on? All right, so what does this say? Uh, bomb cyclone, Northeast, pounding the Northeast. It's back. It didn't happen. Not as far as I can tell. New York, Boston, Philadelphia could experience travel disruptions early morning. Uh, coastal storm will impact southeast New England with heavy rain and strong winds. Maybe you did get some uh, weather on the coast, but <clears throat> Boston will mainly have a rain event on Wednesday morning, but could see snowflakes at the back end of the storm. And I come across this. Look. Rapid intensification of storm off the Carolinas is underway. Underway. Yes. How is it underway? Well, it's underway with uh, NEXRAD. The NEXRAD harboring. The NEXRAD uh, Doppler sites. Here. Of course, rapid intensification. Where was it? That's rapid intensification. Technology to cause the rapid intensification. Well, <clears throat> this is really the first time that I have no clue what's happening when you see these uh, what appear to be storms taking place. I don't know if there's, if you're getting rain. I have no clue. They showed all of this precipitation last night and there was nothing on the radar site. Well, let me just go through what's happening in Nebraska, Iowa, Missouri. Flood relief convoy brings hay and hope to Nebraska ranchers. Ohioans bring hay to Nebraska. And I love when Americans come together. No, you don't have to know one another. You just have to know that people need help. And there were something like 24 trucks brought in from Ohio. It started with two guys, then it grew to five, then it grew to 25. And they just made a convoy all the way down from Ohio to Nebraska. They need hay. And then on the way, because they had signs on the trucks that said Nebraska strong, strangers were donating food and fuel. Convoy of 24 trucks here in Nebraska Strong. Farmers helping farmers. We don't care if you live a mile down the road or 2,000 miles across the United States. We're here to help each other, support anyone we can in any way we can. Yeah, this really needs to be done with all of these events. So a woman <clears throat> in Nebraska, a young woman who just graduated college, she heard that the Payless shoe store in Hayes, Kansas was going out of business. She, she apparently spent two hours negotiating with uh, the corporate office and was able to buy all of the pairs of shoes, 204 pairs, for $100. It was at a value of 6000 And she gave them away to people who are in a whole lot of need. In Nebraska, 
Iowa. Um, look, I just heard this news clip with uh, Nebraska's governor. The news clip, they were saying that a lot of Nebraska is still underwater. Please, you guys in Nebraska, Iowa, South Dakota, any of you in the Sioux Reservation, could you let us know what is happening? 59 counties in Ohio. Disaster declarations. More than half of Iowa. Did I say Ohio? I meant Iowa. 99 counties have received the proclamation because of the widespread flooding and flash flooding and the rapid snow melt L and the temperature fluctuations and the bomb cyclone. Um, all these areas are flooded. And here, listen. After a recent bomb cyclone brought deadly and historic flooding to the Midwest, millions of bushels of grain from ruptured metal silos has spilled out into swamped agricultural land in Iowa or is spoiling inside the storage bins. Reuters correspondent Tom Polancic got a bird's eye view of the destruction with federal and state officials in a Black Hawk helicopter. We saw flooding as far as the eye can see. There were farm fields underwater and fields that were littered with garbage, including fuel tanks, furniture, wood, and other debris. The Iowa Office of the USDA's Farm Service Agency estimates that more than 400,000 acres of farmland in Iowa were flooded. Farmers are now looking to the government for help. But Undersecretary for Farm Production and Conservation, Bill Northey, says under current U.S. law, the USDA has no way to compensate farmers for damaged grain in storage. We would need some expanded authority to be able to help compensate for the grain losses that are out there. One year of not giving aid to Israel. One year. And these farmers could be so <clears throat> helped. Look, we need authorization. I can't stand it. USDA has no mechanism to compensate farmers for damaged crops in storage. A problem never before seen on the scale. Why are we seeing it now? That's in part because US farmers have never stored so much of their harvest after years of oversupplied markets, low prices, and the latest blow of lost sales from the U.S. trade war with China. Ah, the perfect storm. All of it deliberate. All of it deliberate. Have you noticed rising prices in supermarkets? I have. Farm losses drive Iowa's food flood damage to two billion. So four hundred thousand acres of farming gone in just Iowa. Then think of Nebraska and think of the farms on the reservations in South Dakota. Missouri as well. And they're calling for more rain. More rain coming. From where? Well, it will be created. It will be created. Um, new flood worries along the Mississippi. Heavy rain over much of the Midwest on March 30 caused another spike in water levels along the river and its tributaries, especially in Iowa, Missouri and Illinois. So, Illinois, uh, how are your farms doing? And the last video I posted on this flooding, mentioning that they were very concerned about a dam collapsing. 
which would take out so many farms and it would cause flooding all the way to Louisiana. So historic floods in the Midwest have farmers worried about their future? Of course. The 2011 flood that took out like a million acres, prime farmland in Missouri. <laughs> what were farmers to do? And I remember listening and seeing the pictures, but listening to people who had these farms in their families for generations. And because the flooding was so intense, they knew that they wouldn't be able to recover for about three years because of the damage to the soil, the silt or something. Um, well, if they can't work for three years, then FEMA shows up or George Soros shows up, well, we'll offer you pennies on the dollar to buy out your farm your home that has been in your family for generations and they had no choice and it's happening again it's happening again it, 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 it's been happening every year nothing but bad choices the aging dam system behind the Missouri flood yeah. Well, Americans have to start doing some thinking because all of this is deliberate. I just, I, I, I want to show you something. Um, hang on. These are pictures of the 2011 flood in Missouri. Look familiar? Well, it should look familiar because they seem to be doing this on a regular basis. Missouri, prime farm land. Homes in families, generations, hundreds of years. They were destroyed, destroyed. Now in 2011, 2011, the Army Corps of Engineers blew the levees. They blew the levees. Why? Because they had to save Cairo. They had to save Cairo, Illinois. So they blew the levees and literally destroyed for years prime farmland. Okay, does that sound like a rational decision when you look at Cairo? This is Cairo. This is what they were saving, but they destroyed like a million acres of farmland. This is Cairo. This is what they were saving. Uh, the state governors, certainly the governor of Missouri, took the Army Corps of Engineers uh, to court trying to stop them from blowing the levees that would destroy so much farmland to save this. As you can see, many of the buildings are abandoned. Okay. Does this make sense? Of course it doesn't make sense. So they saved all of this, all of these. Cairo was an impoverished uh, town filled with abandoned buildings. It was dilapidated. They saved that and did this.
So, yeah, Army, Army Corps makes tough calls with floods. Tough call, really. Do we flood prime farmland or do we allow Cairo, Illinois to flood? Cairo, Illinois was important to the nation, apparently. Missouri, they were sacrificed. And I'm not going to be linking to all of these articles. This was a video that I posted years ago that, that I just had this on my hard drive. So the Army Corps of Engineers, they blast the holes in Missouri levee to save town from flooding. And farmers were very angry. Uh, allowed to drown 130,000 acres of rich farmland. Oh, uh, no, that number kept increasing. Corn prices rise as multiple floods cut into crop. Man, you know, then I had all of these videos uncensored. This was the Hurricane Harvey News. Texas weather modification director. Storms can be made longer. Produce more rain over a larger area. Texas, Mr. Texas weather modification. And we still can't get through the people that they are causing all of this destruction. Well, what happens once they do all of this? Right? What happens? You destroy the farmers. They can't farm the land. And I believe, I remember hearing three years, but it could have been two years. It, that's That was the destruction. So what does FEMA do? FEMA then, ah, they have successful stories from the Missouri buyout program, full mitigation, best practice story. Yes, they buy out the properties. They buy out towns. And what, once they buy them out, what are the restrictions? No more structures. They're clearing, clearing those lands that are actually, well, let's take a look at this. Those lands that are within that gray area. Mega regions. FEMA removes humans in gray area, turns it green for wildlife, because that's sustainable. It's not sustainable to have all of these people all over living, breathing. They have cows that fart and cause climate change. They drive cars, get them out of there. They want you in the mega regions, the colored regions right here. They just keep buying out properties. And this happens in all areas it happened last year, it happens every year. With all these floods, they come into communities and buy them out. Indiana, uh, for communities plagued by repeated flooding, which they bring on, weather modification, they bring it on to areas repeatedly. Property acquisition may be the answer. Charleston. They bought out homes in Charleston last year. South Carolina, who signed the mayors who signed the Paris Climate Agreement, working to address climate change. Nobody will talk about weather modification. Nobody will talk about the geoengineering. Nobody will talk about the seeding that is taking place. How could we, what the hell have we become? FEMA buyout, Monette, Missouri, FEMA buyout, all these areas. 
and I'm just showing you <laughs> just a scant bit. This is what they do. They send in flood consultants advising the victims. Advising the victims. It's better to sell your properties. Because you know what? The flooding that you're now experiencing, it's only going to get worse because of climate change. So this is uh, the Agenda 2030 program. This is the Agenda 2030 implementation. Buying out so many properties. It's so sad to see this. I hate it, but it's going on. And it will continue to go on. Unfortunately, Americans, uh, Americans, they don't want the truth. They are being destroyed. Seriously being destroyed. Again, all of what I just posted like the last, um, I don't know, 15 minutes, I, I'm not going to link to. You can put the titles in a search bar and come up with those links. But I'll link to the recent articles. The bomb cyclone. Let us know what's happening in your area, Nebraska, Iowa, uh, South Dakota, Missouri. And uh, with your weather in, well, particularly the southeast, New England, because it appears that you may have, or maybe not, I don't know, who the hell knows. You had a bomb cyclone, maybe, pounding the northeast? Jesus. Help, help those in need, please. Help those in need. Don't wait for them to ask. Ciao, guys.